Hello everybody, welcome back to another lesson on biology and geology. Today, uh, let's continue with the unit 6, the vertebrate animals. And today we are going to see the first group of vertebrate, which is uh, fish. Here you have an image of a balloon fish. This, this is a very special one, I love it. Uh, you can see it a lot in anime because it's a popular mm, food in Japan. Uh, maybe you can remember also uh, the Simpsons. I think there's an um, episode where Homer uh, tried to eat this uh, Japanese balloon fish, which is poisonous. So there's like a special technique to eat just the, the parts and to prepare the fish uh, to be safety, to be safe. So I like it. I think it's a very special fish that can, um, that can become very big, like a balloon when they feel a threat or some enemies around it, when they feel scared, cuando, se, cuando sienten una amenaza o, o sienten algún, algún peligro, they feel in danger, se hinchan como un, como un globo. So, let's see the main characteristics of fish. They are aquatic animals. They can live in different types of water. We have fish that can live in fresh water, like trout, but or also they can live in salt water in the sea, like sharks or tuna fish, for example, or sardines. Other, however, other fish can live in both types of water, in salt water and fresh water, like salmon. Maybe you can remember that uh, salmon are fish that mm, they live during their lives uh, in the sea, but mm, when they have to uh, produce the eggs, they go back to the river where they were born. So they have to swim against the stream, against the, the water flow, and uh, to release the eggs. Maybe you have the, the image of a salmon going uh, swimming against the water stream in a river and the bear, the grizzly bear, trying to, to hunt them. So this is a very amazing image of a, of a bear hunting a, a salmon. After the salmon reach the, the highest part of the river, they release their eggs and they usually die after that. So this is the life cycle of the salmon. When they are young, they can live in fresh water, and when they are adults, they reach the sea and do their things before, to, before repeating the, the cycle. Okay, so let's continue with the characteristics. They can live in aquatic environments, so they use gills to breathe. Also, they are mainly carnivores. The big fish eat the small fish. Do you, uh, do you remember the, that sentence? So they are mainly carnivores. Also, they have external fert fertilization. They uh, release the, the gametes to the water and the fertiliz fertilization takes place in the water. They mainly are 
oviparous, but also they can be ovo viviparous, like some sharks. The body is usually their bodies usually has a fusiform shape. I explained before that the fusiform shape is like a mm, rugby ball. Okay, these are the laces. Um, it has like two parts. The middle part is thicker and the ends are pointy, are thinner. So this is the f uh, fusiform shape that allows them to swim very well because it's hydrodynamic shape. So they can cut through the water when they are swimming and the, their bodies don't give too much resistance to the water. Okay, also they have limbs, their limbs, the sus extremidades, are fins, fins uh, allow them to swim and you can find a large variety of fins but mainly they usually have a dorsal fin like this one, they also have a, a, a pectoral fin which is this one and also they have a caudal fin, which is very important. This is like the, the tail of the fish that usually uh, that they use it to control the direction of the swimming. What else? Mm, they have a sense organ very special, which is the lateral line. The lateral line is this line that sometimes we can see in in fish that is a, is a sense organ that can detect the vibration of water so they can re, um, detect if some prey or some predators are uh, close to them so that's it's like a, the sense of touching but in the distance Es como el sentido del tacto, pero a larga distancia. Pueden notar las vibraciones del agua para orientarse y para detectar las presas. <coughs> also, they are poikilothermic. That, that means that they cannot control their uh, body temperature. So, the body temperature is... Mm, Influenced is uh, similar to the uh, temperature of the water. That means that they have to get used to some um, water temperature. For example, you can find some fish that they live in warm water, like the tropical fishes, but also you can find uh, other fish that they can live in cold waters, close to the poles, for example. So that's mm, that have some mm, benefits because they don't need to waste energy to warm their bodies up. But the problem is that they, if the temperature change, they they need to to move and to look for. Uh, for a better temperature in the water. Good, so these are the main characteristics of fish. We can distinguish between two types of fish. We have bony fish that they have a skeleton made by bones. Most of the fish that we know are bony fish, sardines, uh, what else, salmon, mm, tuna fish, all of them are bony fish. They have their bodies covered by scales that they, uh, they lie 
on, on the others like tails in a roof las escamas que recubren su cuerpo se apoyan unas sobre las otras como si fuesen tejas also bony fish have uh, an special organ which is called the swing blader the swing blader this uh, special organ can mm, can contain gases to control the, the depth when they are swimming. So mm, if, they, if they are full of uh, gas, they rise and if they release that gas, then they, can, they sink and they can swim close to the seafloor. La vejiga natatoria se hincha de gas o, o se desinfla, lo que le permite al pez nadar a distinta profundidad, más superficial o más eh, cerca del fondo del mar. Also another characteristic is that the gills are protected by a um, cover uh, which is called the operculum. The operculum. I don't know if you can see it here. Here in the in this in this drawing, we cannot see the gills because there's like a like a lid that um, protects the the gills. El opérculo tapa protege las las agallas o las o las branquias. Good. So the the other the other type of uh, fish are the cartilaginous, cartilaginous fish. It's a very difficult word to pronounce. These fish have an skeleton which is more flexible uh, than the bony fish and is made of cartilage. Tienen un esqueleto cartilaginoso que es más flexible, más blandito es un tejido más blando eh, que, el de los, que el de las raspas, que el del esqueleto de los peces óseos. Uh, for example, our ears are made uh, with this uh, cartilage. Las, nuestras orejas están hechas de, de cartílago. So the skeleton of these fish are, are made by the same kind of tissue. Okay, the, uh, they don't have they don't have scales but mm, the, their body is covered by de, uh, small denticles denticles are like a, mm, tiny spikes that they are very thin very small that cover the surface and the, they look mm, they give a, a smoother look no? da, dan un aspecto mucho más suave que en las escamas de los peces óseos. Also, they don't have swing bladders, so they, most of them, not all of them, they have to, to keep on swimming all the time. If they stop swimming, they sink. Si, si no nadan eh, estos peces eh, cartilaginosos, se hunden. Some examples are the shark that you can see in the image, but also skates and rays, las mantas y las rayas, are, uh, are cartilaginous fish. Mm, and the last, uh, well, the gills are not protected by an operculum. They don't have operculum. So you can see these um uh, the gills okay the gills slits las uh, uh, aperturas branquiales that is similar some some cars use a similar system like the f1 or sport cars i don't know if you if you have an image okay 
So this is a car, the window, the other window. So sometimes they have some slits, unas eh, aperturas eh, to refrigerate the, the engine, el motor, que está en la parte trasera. So the look is similar to uh, shark. And what else? Another difference, which is very, well, it's very special or very interesting, is that the caudal fin in bony fish usually has this shape of a, the head of an arrow, the point of an arrow, la punta de una flecha, something like that, okay? There are some bony fishes that they have a rounded caudal tail, but when they have this arrow shape, Both sides are equal, okay? It's, they are very symmetrical. However, cartilaginous fish, usually they have one side larger than the other. So it's like an asymmetrical arrow. Um, what else? Here I will let you a video, like a short, uh, short documentary on sharks. I think it's very interesting. You can uh, discover uh, amazing things about these beautiful animals. Uh, it's in English, of course, but you can um, put the subtitles in English uh, that can help you to understand and also to listen uh, better English than mine. Last but not least, the What is the difference between, or what's the meaning of poikilotherm? Okay, so poikilotherm are those animals that they cannot, um, they cannot regulate their own body temperature. So <clears throat> we said that the, their temp body temperature can change depending on the temperature of the, of the environment. So usually we call it um, animales de sangre fría, cold blood animals, and they are the fish, amphibians, and uh, reptiles. The other group are homeotherms. Homeotherms are those animals that can keep a constant body temperature. So they have some system to control, to regulate their body temperature. Usually they can use the energy coming from food. Uh, when we eat uh, food, we can use that energy to move our muscles and to carry out the life functions. But also we use the that heat as a calor to warm up our bodies, so we can keep a constant temperature. These examples are birds and mammals. They are homeotherms. Um, the problem is that we have to waste some energy. We need to eat more calories just to keep our body temperature. So these have some good things, but some problems also. So these are the main differences between these two groups, poikilotherms and homeotherms. Mm, I think that's all. Oh, yes, another characteristic, another feature that most fishes uh, have. They are vertebrates and they have an, a very mm, well-developed nervous system. Tienen un sistema nervioso muy bien desarrollado. And they have sense organs. We talked about the... Where is it? The lateral line, okay? That you can see it here. The lateral line. This sense organ that can detect the water vibrations. But also they have eyes. These eyes are, um, mm, they have a lot of sensitivity. They can see, fishes generally can see very well. Some of them, they cannot see colors, but they can see 
um, very well they can produce very good images of uh, of uh, under the sea, right? Um, and also they have this kind of nostrils, estos especie de agujeros um, de la nariz. Uh, and maybe you can ask why do they have these nostrils? Um, because they use gills to breathe. So um, the reason is that the sense organs related with the smell, with the ability to detect different smells, are located there. So water come into the nostrils and they can use it to detect smells in the water. So they can smell very well and I think it's very well known that sharks have good smell and they can detect the blood of their prey um, from a long distance. Um, so they have uh, this great sensitivity. Also, another, another, um, another example are salmons. We said that salmons need to come back to the river where they were born to release the eggs. Okay, so how can detect? How can they detect or know where was that river? So some scientists think that they can recognize the river where they were born um, thanks to to the smell. So that's a very impressive ability um, and also the tropical fishes that uh, live in coral reefs when there's a storm or something happens that they get lost they can come back to their home following the smell. So they have incredible abilities and maybe we the that legend of the bad memory of a fish is uh, maybe we have to maybe it's not so true okay because they ca they can remember some smells to 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 know where are uh, their homes okay it's true that they have a small brain, but they have a very well developed, developed nervous system. Okay, so that's all for today. In the following lessons, we will carry on with the other groups of vertebrates, amphibians and reptiles. So I hope you like it. Don't, don't miss this video because I think it's pretty cool. Um, see you in the next lesson. Bye.